Nerd Journalist TV. Hi, I'm Claire. Hi, I'm Deshaun. Hi, I'm Ken. Hi, I'm Jonah. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. And hi, I'm Paul. We have illustrator Paul Sticklin with us. Hi, Mr. Paul. Thank you for talking to us today. Let's get started with some questions. Since you like dinos so much, were you a paleontologist before you were an author? No, I wasn't, no. But I was really keen on dinosaurs when I was a little boy. Do you have an author to work with, or are you an author and an illustrator? I'm an author and an illustrator, and I design and make pop-up books as well. What is your favorite book that that you wrote and a different author wrote? Oh gosh, that's a difficult one. Um, well, I think, oh, you really have asked me a difficult one. It's usually the book that I'm working on at the moment is usually my favorite one until I get nearly to the end of the book and then I get really bored with it. And let's have a think about a book that I really like. Um, oh, it's difficult to say. Dinosaur my, Roy? Well, Dinosaur Roy, yeah, I kind of like Dinosaur Roy. I wrote that 24 years ago now, though. That was a long time ago, that was. Um, I used to love the books that my grandfather wrote. My grandfather was an author and illustrator, too. And his name is Geoffrey Squire. And I used to love those books because he gave them to me when I was little. And I was quite inspired by that. Okay. Did you, did you, did you like making art when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've always loved drawing. I'm much like you. I just love drawing. Yeah, drawing's great. Yeah. How do you make your images? Do you paint or do you color in? Okay, well usually I start off by drawing a uh, pencil drawing first. Because I like I like doing pencil drawing because you can make a mistake and it doesn't matter because you can just rub it out and do, do another one again, uh, which is great. So I usually do pencil drawing first, yes. then I will color it in using inks. And I use watercolor inks. What was your hobby before you were an author? Gosh, well, I, as I started writing stories when I was about four, I can't really remember what my hobby was before that. Yeah, so, so I started writing stories when you lot started writing stories, as soon as you could write. Okay. Where do you make your art? Okay, I've got a lovely little studio at the bottom of my garden, mm -hmm. and it's got a lovely view out, and I've got a big desk in there, and it's really messy, and I can close the doors on the world and sit in there and draw to my heart's content. How long does it take to make a book? Oh, that really depends on the complicatedness of the book. Sometimes it would take me maybe six months. Dinosaur Raw took about six months to paint. Okay. And then I did another book that took me three years. So it really depends on how complicated the book is. Okay. Did, how long did Monkey Business? Monkey Business probably took about mm, about nine months, I reckon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because that was a pop-up book, and pop-up yeah. books always take a bit longer. Do your children inspire your writing? <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, yes, they do, because I tend to think like a child as well. And it's, I suppose it's more me, when I was a child, really inspires my writing, because I would just remember what it was like to be a little boy. Yeah. What's your favorite pop-up layout technique? <gasps> There are so many different ones. There are so many different ones. I like any technique that gives you a really good surprise. And that could be all sorts of different pop-up techniques, yeah. Do you, uh, do you travel a lot? Yeah, I travel a lot. Yeah, I visit an awful lot of schools and I work in festivals and I go work in libraries all around the world. Yeah, it's great, I love that bit. Will you ever make a novel? And it could have illustrations. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, I have actually written the beginnings of some novels, but I've never really got around to finishing them. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've written yeah, lots of drafts, and I've written quite a lot of scenes, but I've never really put them together. Why not? Why not? Um, I don't know. I think it's just there are so many other things to do. And I'm so caught up with doing um, my schoolwork, and I don't know, I don't, I mean, that's a good question, why not? Um, I don't know. I was thinking about it last night, actually, thinking I could have spent the time when I'm sitting in my hotel room, I could be writing, or when I'm on a train, I could be writing. Mind you, I often make pop-up books on trains, which makes everybody go, what on earth are you doing? Yeah, give them a good surprise. Do you collect anything? Yeah, plants. <laughs> lots and lots of plants. 
thousands of different plants. I love plants. <laughs> what's your opinion on Google's drawing AIs? I don't know. What's a Google's drawing AIs? They're well, there's a few different ones. One of them is you draw something and it replaces it with what it thinks it's supposed to be. But really, I haven't, I haven't tried that. That would be interesting. To, I'd like to experiment with that. I mean, I've used things like Google SketchUp for producing 3D drawings. Um, but no, on the whole, I quite like just drawing. Yeah, just naturally. Either on a piece of paper or on a Cintiq, on a screen, where you can draw on the screen. Uh, which works really well. And again, you can draw really freely where you can rub it out easily. Even though you don't necessarily need to, the option to be able to rub something out is, is really good. Yeah. Do you want your children to be authors or illustrators? <laughs> I'd rather they got a job that paid well. Um, I wouldn't mind. Um, one of my sons is studying drawing at university at the moment, but I think he may become a sculptor rather than a drawer. But drawing is really, really important for lots of different careers. You know, if you want to be a fashion designer, or if you want to design Lamborghinis, or if you want to... Ooh, yeah, there Sports you go. Car. See, that's it. Somebody drew that out one day. Somebody had a fantastic job, and I wanted to be that person. You wanted when to I was, draw sports I cars. did want to design sports cars. Well, for now. And I spent a lot of time drawing sports cars. And when I was a little boy, do you know what? I actually wrote to Lamborghini. Yeah, I so loved their Lamborghini Mura. <laughs> that I, I, I wrote to them and said, can I have a, um, one of your brochures? And they sent one back to me, yeah? In Italian, didn't help, but they sent one back to me. I was so chuffed by that, that was great. Why do you make pop-up books? I love the element of surprise. I love the fact that when you open the page, <gasps> it gives you a surprise, a shot, pokes you in the <laughs> face, you know, you know, you've seen some of my pop-up books. Yeah, I love the element of surprise. And I like the structure as well. I like the way I like building things. I like thinking in three dimensions. So a pop-up book can do all of those things, which is great for me. Did you have a job before making children's books? Um, I did my first children's books about ten years after I started um, working as an illustrator. But I've I've always drawn I've always drawn things. So um, and I used to draw people's houses. That was how I made some money when I was at school. And then when I went to college, I did all sorts of print work. I did things for newspapers and book covers. And I did everything like designing toys and glove puppets and teapots and all sorts of things. Yes, yeah, so I've always designed and drawn lots of different things. But when I did my first children's book, I thought that's what I really want to do. Do you remember I said my grandfather did that too? And I'd seen him do that and I kind of thought I'd want to work for children. What is the first book you ever wrote? It was series. awful. It was a dreadful book. I did a book about two pandas riding a bicycle. And the pandas <laughs> looked rubbish, and the bicycle was rubbish, and the book was rubbish. So I'm not mm. going to tell you what the title is in case you go find it. <laughs> but I was just learning, yeah? But that was my first one. Why it wasn't you? called Two Pandas on a Bicycle. But why do you call it rubbish? Because, well, I suppose I shouldn't be so mean. The thing is, I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah, it was only the first thing that I'd done and I didn't realise that you had to work out the story carefully and you had to work out so the one page when you turned it over or so that you had one page and you actually wanted to turn the page over. So yeah, I was just learning. Thank heavens it's disappeared. So you made it pretty much, right? Yeah, um, but some of the early books that I did were non-fiction books. Oh, yeah, so okay. they didn't have a narrative storyline to them. So that was easy for me because I was just doing a picture of a digger or a truck or I didn't have to link it together as a story. Okay. That, that came later. Are dinosaurs your favourite animal? Not really, and uh, they're not animals either. Uh, they're, well, they're reptiles, aren't they, really? Mm, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, from a long time ago. Like yeah, and the best thing about dinosaurs is they're all dead, aren't they? Well, apart from chickens and crocodiles and Komodo dragons mm -hmm. and monitor lizards and all the rest. No, uh, my favourite animal is probably uh, an otter. I love otters. Where are you from? I come from England. Uh, like, are your like favourite, are like dinosaurs your favourite animal? Like to write on books and stuff? Yeah, it's quite nice, because if you, if you draw dinosaurs, nobody can tell you you're wrong, really. Because all we know about dinosaurs, really, is their bones, isn't it? 
so we're kind of guessing about what the rest of their bodies look like, like the bits. I mean, the T-Rex might have been a big blobby body on it, you know. We only think it looks the way it looks. Why didn't you draw hair on your dinosaur purple one? Yeah, I should do. Well, the well, I did. I think I, told, I showed you dinosaur raw that I put feathers on the dinosaur, and I got really <laughs> told off for that because yeah. in those days, dinosaurs didn't have feathers. But now, luckily, we know they did have feathers. But yeah, in in to be accurate, I should probably go back and completely redo dinosaur raw and just cover them all with feathers. Yeah, it would look like. <laughs> Dinosaur chicken, no, it'd be like chicken raw, wouldn't it? Well, no, like macaws, because they're bright colors. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. How many exactly. times do you revise or edit your book? Oh, quite a few. Yeah, quite a few. Um, yeah, but that usually happens fairly early on in the process. If you're writing a novel, the editing tends to happen towards the end of the process. If you're writing a children's book, it's a really good idea to have those sort of decisions made right at the beginning. Um, because the important thing when you're doing a children's book is not to duplicate in the pictures what you've written in the text, yeah? So you need to have the text pretty certain, because you don't want to, you know, say, this is a picture of a dinosaur, and then draw a dinosaur. You want to say something different to what you're actually showing, so you have to work out the text first, ideally. Doesn't mean that I haven't done all the pictures for a book and then had to do the text later. I won't tell you which book that is. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> What do you do as a pest? Well, I really like to play the guitar. Um, I play bass guitar and I play that in the band. Um, I really like growing plants. I'm a really, really keen gardener. I can't stop gardening. I love gardening. It's my favourite thing. So I run a cut flower farm at home as well. Yeah, so I love doing all sorts of stuff. And I like building houses. I like building anything, actually. So you need to pop up. Well, a real pop-up animal. Like a realistic one? Like um, yeah, I think I probably have, actually. I think some of them look fairly realistic. They're always a bit silly. One question. Okay. Like, how, do, how do you make your pop-up books? Well, really, I mess around. It's great. I just fiddle about until I get it right. So you mean, so I'll so you mean like, I did, like I did this? Yeah. I mean, literally, I will mess around with pieces of paper and try fixing them together. <laughs> and I don't know whether I told you, um, sometimes it's the bits of paper that I cut off that end up being the pop-ups. So, um, oh, yeah, that's right. If I, if I look in, say, if I look in the scrap box and I see some really good shapes, I think, oh, I could make something interesting out of that. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's kind of random, really. But I like to experiment and mess around and make mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's the best so, thing. So if you make these little monsters like yeah. you did, uh, do you do you actually put them in your books, or do you just? Well, I yeah, I have put a couple of um, monsters like that in the book with that sort of mouth mechanism, um, but I found that it's really good fun to take them out of the book, and just then you can create more different things, and yeah, you've got a little bit more freedom when they're outside, and kids really love it. You know, it's great. Sometimes um, people don't enjoy writing stories. Difficult to believe, but sometimes they don't. And if you actually create a little creature. It gives you lots of ideas about, you, you know, you can build up a story. Once you make the head, you can make the rest of the body. Absolutely. And then you can think about who the friends are, what it eats, what its habitat is. And often people who don't like writing stories end up writing a story in their head while they're making it. Yeah. So it's really quite helpful for kids that don't so not really good stories. So to your dad or grandpa or whatever, I, like you, as you said earlier, was an author, I just illustrator, did that inspire you yeah. to, to, yeah. to be an author? Yeah, because they were really creative, it? yeah. And my dad was a very good drawer. He was an engineer, yeah, but he was very good at drawing. And my mum <coughs> ran play groups, but she was really good at drawing. So in our household, everybody draws. Everybody draws. And we play drawing games and all sorts of different things. Yeah, and drawing is just brilliant. It's the best, best way of expressing yourself. Our journalist, Rachel, couldn't be here today. But here... Here, but here are some questions she had for you. Okay. Why do you think authors change their names into a fake, into fake names? Did you ever want to change your name in? in yeah, I, name? that's funny. That is, I'd actually thought about that once because I thought. Doctor Seuss. Yeah, Doctor Seuss. I think that name's been taken already. But yeah, he had a different name, didn't he? I think he just didn't want to be associated with his his own name. What was his name? I can't remember what his name was now. 
But the, um, yeah, I think it really helps if you want to do some work that's completely different to your other work, yeah? So say everybody knows me for drawing dinosaurs. Say I wanted to do a series of books on, oh gosh, sharks. I'm trying to think of something completely different. No, sharks would be okay, because that's no, the same sort of thing. cute stuff. Yeah, so I want to do a book on fairies and things like that, which Ooh. just is not going to happen, let me tell you that right now. Yeah, um, I might change my name to Ludabelle <laughs> Trixie Face or something like that, you know. Uh, yeah, because uh, all the people who know me for dinosaurs would say, oh, what's he doing with fairies on that? Whereas I just, you know, I might want to do fairy books, who knows? I probably don't, though, because I'm not very good at that sort of thing. Is this your first time in Singapore? Yeah. Is it nice? I love Singapore, it's really interesting. Yeah, it's fascinating. And I love the plants, of course, because I'm a very keen gardener, so I just it's love that. It's tropical. It's really tropical, isn't it? And nothing grows like that in the UK. And also, I've got to see a monitor lizard, and yeah. all those horrible macaques in the jungle, I don't like them, and a skink, and some cool bugs, and loads of stuff. I love, I love learning about those things. Did your books ever get featured somewhere, like a gallery or a bookstore window? Yep. Yep, yeah, lots, lots of the time, because my books are sold all over the world, um, and in lots and lots of different languages as well. Um, so I probably wouldn't be aware of lots of the times they've been <coughs> featured in windows and things, but yeah, and I've even had design windows um, for my books. You know, if you're doing a special promotion of your book, I'll, I'll do big cut-out dinosaurs for it and things like that. But yeah, yeah, so yeah, they often end up in funny ways, and yeah. And also I get to make big three-dimensional dinosaurs as well. So I have created giant dinosaur mouths for kids to get in and sit in the mouth of the dinosaurs. And big um, foam dinosaur mouths. And yeah, I love building things. Have you ever done something really bad or mischievous during your childhood? If so, what was it? <laughs> um, uh, probably. Um, I can't really remember it offhand, one of the naughty things I might have done. I might have, w no, I can't tell you that, that would be terrible. I no. did once trip over a little girl and she fell into our pond. That's not the worst bit. You know frog spawn, you know like baby frogs, I've got the like little round frog's eggs and my pond was full of frog spawn and I kind of tripped her up as she was running down the garden, she fell into the pond. <gasps> the worst thing was she fell into the pond with her mouth open. And she swallowed the frog spawn. <gasps> it was awful. It was a terrible thing to do. And I know she swallowed the frog spawn because when she got out of the pond and her mum came roaring down the road, she said, You've just tripped out my daughter. She's falling in there. She's eaten the frog spawn. And we knew that she'd swallowed the frog spawn because she was sick and the frog spawn all came out. You don't want to know that, do you? You shouldn't ask me that question. <laughs> Thank you for visiting. That's all the time we have. Oh, well, thank you very much. It was very good questions. Thank you very much for those. See you yeah. next time at Junior Turtles TV. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much.